Do I have it on agenda? Not on the agenda. Coming up. This must have been a. I have trouble looking through. Yes. I didn't print everything either. This isn't something. Well, that's our homework. This is. These are the pay orders. Who? Does it show in there who is listed for pay orders? No. Oh. Lee, Bashan, and Rooney. All right, so, 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 and you'll need a third person because uh, Joey's not here. So, we have to pull the on this board? No. There's nobody filled that seat yet. We took a picture of this thing and I'm looking at it. Because it's likely, you know, it'll be seven. One, two. Next year, it'll probably be like this. Seven, eight. Oh, ten. Beautiful. No, there's more. All right, I'll be back. I'll be Allison, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, eating. Yep. Does anybody need a packet? Does anybody need a packet of tonight's meeting agenda? Okay. All right, let's get going. Oh, 75 pages. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call a start. I'm meeting to order at 622. Right. Um, uh, is there any public comment at this time? All right. Hearing none. Um, in, uh, in order to provide the board with a little information, we're going to need an executive session up front. Um, it, the, it's Title One BSA three one three A one B. This information is around a student something we would never discuss in public session. So uh, we'll need just a few minutes to uh, go over it, and then we can come out and proceed with our meeting as normal. You need a motion? I do need a motion. And perhaps that motion could include inviting Jess and I to attend the executive session. All right. I make the motion to go into executive session, quoting the correct title, and inviting Patrick and Jess. Is there a second? Carol? Carol. Right. Yep. And it is 623. We're going into executive session. All those in favor of going into executive session under T Title One BSA three one three A one B regarding uh, uh, student matter, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay. Do we, do we have to do any action on the record? No. Nope. No. Nope. We just need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So. Allison? Second. And Chris. All those oh, in favor. Sorry, Allison and Chris? Yes, Allison and Chris. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Down to executive limitations monitoring. An update was included in your packet uh, with the financial report. Do you have any questions? There was a little summary sheet of uh, specific items. Just curious about the health care recapture. Any specific curiosity about the health care recapture? I'm also very curious about the health care <laughs> <laughs> Just so everybody just can follow brief, along, what brief, page are you looking on? Um, on the summary sheet? Yeah, just in front of it, there was a, uh, some notes. Oh, okay. Financial statement notes. Yep. At the top. Uh, education fund revenue deficit reflects the amount of the health care recapture. Oh, that was the, the money that the state, That's isn't that the money of the state? Right, so of the money that the state's going to be recapturing, they're going to be recapturing 65% of that money this year, 35% of that money this year, and the recapture amount is included in the summary. And that's item 2310-5899, as noted in the next line down. I'm not seeing the line here. Oh, right there. Yes. So 
the special projects. First time I've seen this. Is there a separate um, description of what these actually are? If one was curious. Yeah, there's a, there's a more detailed description of those different special project funds. And those are in the detail? Those would be something separate that we have to provide if you wanted the details. Well, there okay. is this list here on this. Yeah, I see right that. down here. Right, but there's I was curious as to like as to what they're used for. Yeah, you could look at there. We could show you expenditures from each of those over the years and give you a sense of what kinds of things they're earmarked for and what money has been spent on. <clears throat> yeah, most of them are are pretty straightforward, and yeah. Jess might be able to elaborate on some. So I think band, industrial arts, library, driver's ed. Um, are relatively self-explanatory. Co-curricular could be a number of different activities and events. Uh, probably is the sum of several different. Um, and these are funds for basically for things that aren't sort of the basic curriculum. They're special projects. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they may be. So the co-curricular may be some fundraising monies that have been generated that go into this uh, student activities account that then get spent on the things that they're fundraising that money for. And a lot of, I mean, it's, this is almost a form of savings for departments, and so design and technology is saving up for a big piece of equipment, so right, it doesn't right. really so kind of like a, take the legs a out of a budget. Fund for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stuff. Yeah, okay. And so, fair, right, so fairly common practice for a lot of the elementary schools is to put some amount of money in each year into a special projects fund so that when they have a capital improvement, typically, that they want to do, They've saved the money up to do those things. Yeah. Okay. Barry? It's just, these are used to be called sinking funds. funds. Yes, that's what we yeah. used to call them. Right. And rather than just being one single fund, it's sort of breaking down all the different kinds of funds, which at the high school, there tends to be more of these than you'd find at an elementary school. Okay. Any other questions around the financial update? Update for the food service was also included in your packet. Any questions regarding that? Okay. All right, I'm gonna keep moving along. Strategic planning was included in your packet. Do you have any questions regarding that update? All right. Our next item is for discussion is to review the monitoring reports, the C1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. First time everybody got to see this was in this packet. Everyone should have got one in the mail as well. Yes. Yes. I think mine just stayed in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice job. I can imagine the, the time and the effort it took, but well done. And I give all the credit to Katrina. She took this and ran with it, worked with a lot of people, principals, put a lot of work into this. Um, Katrina and her team did a ton of work to pull together all the data. Uh, and I, and Eva Manaib uh, was a great help in formatting and, and helping to produce the document. So. Many people put lots of great effort into this. Can we talk about the process that you talked about just in the executive committee a sure. minute ago? So it doesn't sound like we need to hash through this in depth tonight. No. This is to be reviewed by us. There seems to be a, a, a review form. Mm -hmm. yes, right. So we can add, if you have comments now, something that you, you, know, you want to say. I have this comment, maybe someone else has that comment, maybe the, um, and then that information will go to the executive back to the executive committee. We'll hear that. They may or may not, depending on what they hear as a whole, do something with that information. If they if you know all the local boards come back and they all have one similar comment, uh, I would assume that they would, you know, take take that into consideration as they're looking at it again. And then um, the executive committee would be tasked with 
approving the monitoring report. Um, and uh, the SD board, I believe, will probably do the same thing, if I have that right, as just as a practice process, process for them. Um, so these uh, review sheets should come back to you? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then you'd like these by you, the next? You can, yeah, you can, if you just have one comment or if you, you, know, you want to send it back, you can somehow get your comments back to me. Okay. Um, either send the form or, you know, send it in an email. And in terms of process, that's the most important thing is that Don, as your chair, gets your feedback right. so that she can bring it back to the executive committee. The executive committee looks at all the feedback and decides what to do with it. Is it, is it appropriate to ask a question now, or does it need to be submitted in writing? I think a few clarifying questions is fine. I think it, it's... <clears throat> It's just hard to dig into all the details because we didn't really allow time for that. My, my question is, real, I think about process rather than a specific detail, and maybe informed by numbers that I see on the table, but it's more a question about process. Yeah. I could probably summarize it in a few sentences if that's appropriate. I can write it too if, sure, that, sure. if that's well, helpful. Let's, let's see if we can. Uh, I'm looking at the page that's titled Core Subject SBAC, and there's a table of scores. Uh, page four. Um, my eye gravitates down towards the bottom right of that table. It gravitates towards the grade eight line and the grade 11 line, and it gravitates towards scores that on the surface to me look shockingly low in comparison to other Vermont scores and other years scores. Mm -hmm. Aside from expressing that shock, I wonder about the process and there's a couple of things I wonder about the process. The first is that there's a paragraph at the top of that page, and the last sentence it says, we'll be using the overall data to think about continued refinement of our programming and to set goals for future curricular work. It seems like those numbers in that sentence work directly together. And I'm curious, how does that happen? Because I look at numbers like that, and I don't have the backstory, I don't have years of data to look at, I don't have the distributions, I don't have all the information that's necessary to really interpret what that means. And I'm just curious, in a sentence or several, who does that and how does that happen? And how does that get fed back? Or who's accountable to those actions to concluding that they're adequate to either address those problem areas or look at areas that haven't yet degraded to those problem level and prevent future grades from evolving into that same problem state? Mm -hmm. Was that question clear? Or was that, so, wasn't too much of a rant, I hope. And, and you began to answer it yourself and by saying there's a lot of work that goes into understanding more about um, what, are the, what are the results really telling a us. A lot of information behind us, I'm certain. Um, and so the, the work of that, so part of what we're doing is building a system um, to be able to address some of these concerns and, and support everyone. Because the reality is there are many, 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 many people involved in in achieving the results that we get. So when you look at, say, a grade eight score, that's not just the eighth grade teams that had an impact on creating that score. That's everyone those students have, have worked with prior to that point in time in their eighth grade year. So you really have to take a systems approach to, to figuring out what are the needs and how do we address that. So in building the system, a model we're building right now to help be better prepared to respond and, and not even so much respond as it is sort of get ahead of what we're seeing as uh, some scores that, that are not to our level of satisfaction in terms of sort of the, from my opening statement here, filling the vessel. There's a lot of things to celebrate in terms of kindling the flame, but filling the vessel, there's some evidence that suggests we have some work to do. So when I think about our structure that we're building where we have coordinators, so we have a math coordinator, a science coordinator, uh, well, not a science coordinator yet, or, looking down the road a little bit, but we have math, we have English, and we have social emotional learning coordinators who work with coaches, who work with teachers to ensure that the practices that need to be in place are, are in place and are implemented with fidelity to make sure that we're assessing the way we need to assess, that we're monitoring with lots of other assessments along the way that influence what you're seeing in this single assessment. So we would have multiple assessments to support or refute this behind it um, and adjust the student needs along the way. That's the system we're building. It's now mostly in place, but just recently. We've had a math coordinator for quite a while. 
Um, and so our, our, our ability to look at and, and look at student assessment data, collect student assessment data, um, adjust practices, implement best practices, and improve outcomes for kids is a little bit more enhanced in math because we've had that level of coordination for a little while. This is the first year we've had a literacy coordinator, so that's a step in the right direction in terms of building some of that. It's the first year also we have a point four social emotional learning coordinator, so that's helping to sort of address some of the underlying needs to make sure that students are accessible for learning. So those are some of the, the parts and pieces that are being put into place, and those folks are looking at student data with administrators, as a leadership team, with teachers, with coaches, um, everyone needs to wrap their head around the data that we're collecting on a regular basis, not just NECAP but every or SBAC, but all the other parts of the data, and continually adjust and monitor and adjust and monitor. Thank you. Sorry, it was long-winded, but it, that's the complexity of the work. I have a follow-up on that. I'm the data guy who works in my school in Heinsberg, and I guess I don't know where the, I guess I never see this in our SU, and when I talk to teachers, they don't really connect to the SPACs. I mean, they do their classroom assessments, and I look at these descriptions of the, of what's happening in the school highlights, and the Bristol one actually had a nice description of data, but I guess I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that in the, as we roll in the future that we actually have some sort of public explanation, I guess, of, well, this is the complexity. So there's complexity, then show me the complexity. Because you put the information on here, great, but all I have is questions. So then I go on the state website, which breaks it down by school, by grade level, by race, gender, whatever. Um, I can get that data online, but then I have more questions and I go and talk to my kid's teacher, for example, and it's disconnected from everything else because they talk about my son, which is great, <laughs> but, but I want to, like, I'm looking between the little, looking at a tree and I'm looking at the forest here, I guess, and I don't know where the answers are going to come from. So you say that there's a, a system in place, or close to putting it in place, so I'm hoping that as we roll forward, There'll be more details and meetings or explanations or somebody to talk to. That's long term. I think there are just two other things that might be helpful in the conversation is um, I think given, I mean, relatively early we are in the assessment, that there's some kind of level of um, confidence that has eroded in how is the data going to be used, how closely can we drill into it, when is it going to be a moving target, because we know that this year um, the 11th grade test is moving to 9th grade. And so we're really focusing also on how do we create a culture in which any assessment, regardless of how you might feel about the assessment, is something that you do your best on. Um, and so really focusing um, on this is one measure. We expect you to do your best in really creating a culture in which students do their best on any measure that we, that we might need. Um, and then uh, our proficiency-based learning work is really a lot of what is gearing toward ensuring that all students meet these standards at graduation. Um, and so the curriculum and assessment work that teachers are so deeply engaged in right now, really aligning curriculum, looking at student assessments together, looking at kind of their local data and saying, does it measure up to what we're seeing in the state level data? Um, when we are able to have those conversations, we'll start to get an even more complex picture, but at least a triangulation of the data to really understand where students are at. Thank you. Anyone else? something clarified in order to give the feedback? Steve, you're looking like you're thinking about something. No? All right. All right. So then we'll move down. The same um, process is for uh, C2.5 emergency superintendent succession. This is our first chance to see what, you know, take a look. Um, Steve is signing, you are signing, and one, find one more person. Um, anyway, so so uh, emergency superintendent succession is included in your packet if you have comments about you know that you want to give feedback on that one. It can happen the same way. You can do it in an email. You can say it right now, quickly. <laughs> See anybody 
already jumping up, so we're going to keep going. The next item is to award the bid for the purchase of the driver's education car, which we did last month, but the, or two months ago, but there were some problems with that, so it was not legal, so we have to redo it. I have a proposed action for you if you'd like to consider, and that action will be to take all this item until your next meeting. We were optimistic that we'd have the bids ready for tonight. The bids are not ready for tonight. All right. Then so that would be next time. All right, so next meeting. We'll table that till the next meeting, unless somebody is dying to take some action right now without information. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, action item on the career change incentives. I think the same information that was supplied at the EC meeting about, um, you know, a tight budget year and finding ways to sort of spur attrition. Would, um, be the same reasons to look at it with this group. And that was included in the packet. I make a motion that we approve the career change incentive. As, and Chris? All right. As recommended by the Senator. Okay. Any discussion? Otto? Have we offered, <coughs> have we offered this kind of career change incentive Previously or recently for support staff, I don't recall. No, no, that's new. And that, um, well, there, in there's a the side letter that was a part of the executive committee, which would um, taking action on this then would then take would really authorize me to sign that if we take action on this. Um, a, a side letter that is doesn't set any precedent. It's not you know past practice. It's just. A, Sort of, this is where we are, and this is what's happening. We all agree to that. And the purpose of this is to incent people to change careers, and those positions would not be backfilled, depending on, but the goal would be to backfill fewer than take the incentive. So we manage that. Yeah. So we it's encouraged to um, respond to the current budget constraints that the state is asking them for it, uh, through attrition rather than RIFs. This is a proactive way to do that. Where somebody can choose. You know what? I was thinking about going anyway, so I might as well go now. Understood. Thank you. So, okay. Anyone else have any questions? All right. All those in favor of approving the career change instead of as recommended by the superintendent, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Down to board management and governance. Update from the policy and governance is enclosed in your packet. Any questions? All right, moving on. Update to re uh, receive the approved interpretations, same um, ones as in the C3.1, 3.2, and 3.3. So to clarify, we're simply acknowledging receipt of these. At yes. This point. Right. Yes. We're not doing anything with them. That's all Correct. PC work. Yeah. Right. Is there a motion? I move to to receive the receive approved. the approved reports. <laughs> all right. Second. All right. Steve. All right. All those in favor of receiving the approved interpretation, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So who moved that? Otto and Steve. Sorry, that wasn't on, on the agenda. No, well, we're just going to do it that way. I think it's good for you. Yep. <laughs> all right, update was the all boards work plan that was included in your packet. It's just an update. Do you have any questions? Anything should have been changed accordingly to the description? from the discussion at the last meeting. All right, and an update from the Mount Avery Renovation Project tomorrow night, 5.30, the tour, tour. seven o'clock is the information meeting. In the large cafeteria, correct? Mm -hmm. I think that's where, I think so. And early absentee voting is available if people are so inclined mm -hmm. to get it taken care of before the day. Yep. November 2nd. Yes, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Holly Hall for <laughs> Bristol. For Bristol. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Sorry, sorry, for Bristol. 
on that time. Seven to seven a.m. to seven p.m. Yeah. for all of it. Yeah. Most on yeah. Thursday. Most yeah. of the time we vote on Tuesdays. Yes. Yeah. So make sure people know it's Thursday. Indeed. That's why early voting is so convenient. <laughs> <laughs> you don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Yes. yes. Any sense as to how the feedback? What? What? How does the feedback run? Is it too close to call? Or are you getting lots of negative feedback? I'm just curious. What? What are you hearing? Because I just hear it from individuals or see a few postings here and there. I, we've been pushing it on Facebook um, and uh, targeted people in the five town areas by zip code so that it would just show up in their news feed. So we've reached, I think, close to 2,000 people with just the informational where, where to vote and stuff, and there's some posts there. I would say it's slightly more in favor. There are some that are, are just more vocal um, for no, but there have been quite a few in favor and, and quite a few residents taking up the charge against those saying negative things. So. And I've pretty much been letting comments stand. There was one comment I deleted because I just didn't think it was appropriate, but I've let everybody else stand. And I think it started out mostly in the positive, and only later did the There's negatives start to come. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. so, so. And I think we get that with any election exactly. anyway. Exactly. More and more yeah. people become engaged. Right. I think as more people get become informed about just how different the financial picture is now um, and how many buffers that we've really tried to put in place to make it happen, um, they start to understand. And so, but people who haven't had access to that information and assume that you know, three years ago is exactly the scenario now um, has been pretty damaging. And so I think it's really just making sure that people get out to vote. Um, and are informed. And are right, really and are informed. informed. Countering <coughs> the, well, it's the same thing it was last time. No, this is, it builds on that. Yeah. But it's also different. Yeah, we hear a lot of, uh, Alice and I hear a lot of uh, knee jerk reaction to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. As soon as you have a conversation, yeah. they mm -hmm. start to, oh, you know, it's like, uh, as soon as they're informed, mm -hmm. that's, the, yes. that's the hard part is going to be informed. Uh, information nights have been attended or not attended? Have there been constructive discussion in those that were in attendance? We started with three in New Haven at the first information night um, and have worked our way up. Last night was Lincoln and that was uh, pretty well attended. I'd say about equal with um, Starksboro. Um, Moncton had a good crowd. Moncton had a good crowd too. So. Um, uh, yeah, those three were pretty even. Mostly supporters or people there to get actually to get information and have a discussion? A lot of everything. A, a lot of people in favor of it. A lot of, um, there was one of the three at New Haven, one uh, woman said that um, she has a daughter with special needs and had homeschooled her until high school and, and decided to try Mount Aid, not really having high expectations and has been overwhelmingly surprised with the positive outcomes that her daughter has received um, from the, the staff here. So um, she was very much in support of it and then um, others as well saying it's time. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. We do not need another executive session. Uh, so is there any public comment? All right. No? Does somebody have the meeting evaluation up that they can run through that? Just so happens. Oh, I did, but it's not okay. up anymore. Well, well, can... well, while you're pulling it up, I just want to let people know that I received a, a, a letter from Jody tonight that she is immediately, effectively resigning from both pos her positions on both boards. So we're down another member. Um, I believe, still in our case, it is the responsibility of the Starksboro Board to appoint. So um, I'll get word to Louis, or have, you know, get word to Patrick and Louis that we're going to need to go looking for another member. So I just got it this afternoon. So that's why it's not on the agenda, but I want everybody to know that Jody is effective immediately resigned. So 
I thanked her for her years of work and completely understand how life gets busy and can only be pulled in so many directions. So, all right. I have 10 questions for you. What is the level of engagement of all board members? High or low? And any comments? No, there's no high. I'm like an appropriate. Right. High? I'd go high. Any comments? Was the agenda followed, yes or no, or comments? Yes. Was the agenda linked to the board's annual work plan, yes or no? Yes. I hear loud yeses. I just want to make sure everybody's, I don't think you're getting disputed. I just want to make sure. Is there any, was there sufficient board time spent on community linkage? Yes. Yeah, we're not eight meetings morning. Mm -hmm. But maybe the first time we've answered yes to that question <laughs> yeah. in, a long time, in, in quite a while. So I'm glad to I'm glad to enter yes there. Uh, there was sufficient board time spent on ends yes. discussion. Yes. 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 Challenge you to say ends without <laughs> articulating. There was sufficient board time spent on executive limitations. Yes. Yes. The consent agenda was used appropriately. Yes. yes. What went well with the meeting? On time and efficient. <laughs> On time and efficient. What can the executive session ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to spell that like I'm from Boston. Eva. Uh, <laughs> what concerns do you have with the meeting? None. I, I just have one about the executive session because I don't know the specifics of what we're going to discuss. Maybe my brain works too slow, but after we ended, I thought of a couple of questions, which wouldn't ultimately affect in this case, but sometimes it feels rushed. Okay. So specific to executive session, yeah. since it's not previously warranted? Something will come up and I'll go, huh, later. And it's not a big thing, but I, you know. I'm not, you know, I don't want to slow the train down either, but, uh, you know, especially you have I know right. I'm not going to change my, my outcome, but, you know. Is there a questions. comment you would have me write under what concerns do you have with the meeting? A way to summarize that? Sometimes I want longer think time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How else to put it? That's what I wrote. Sometimes I want longer think time. Great. Right. Yeah. Put it in the record. How could this meeting be improved? <laughs> no suggestions. Done. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All right. Sounds like Chris and Carol. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning at? Oh, geez, I can't get to the time. Six fifty-six. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you.